So hello friend, this is Rupesh and watching Supernet video series on multi-threading and this video is about scoped lock. So we have seen so many uh, locking wrappers, right? We have seen lock guard, we have seen unique lock and stuff. Now we'll see scoped lock and there is a fun in this, we'll see that. So as the name says, it is scoped lock. So basically there is a scope of a function. Let's say this is the starting bracket and end bracket of this thread and you will have this scoped underscore lock and we'll have this object name let's say l and here you can give so many mutexes m1 m2 m3 and this can go on and this guy will actually try to lock all the mutexes it is been provided here cool right because it is possible that you have a critical section here which is requiring so many mutex to be locked because it is going to do some job which will require so many mutex to be locked because it is going to access the critical section of all the mutexes okay and the magic is you don't have to do anything when you are going away from this thread meaning this is a scoped lock so when the function is terminating it will see that okay i have to destruct this l and then it will unlock all the mutexes let's see that how it does it and before going there let me tell you one thing as you see it is taking so many mutexes right if it is trying to lock many mutexes then there is a possibility that it can have a deadlock and to avoid that deadlock it uses std lock mechanism if you don't know what is std lock i mean std colon colon lock i have a video you may get some link here and if i forgot to give that link let me know in the comment section because i tend to forget that now let's look at the code we have a very simple structure here i'm just creating a thread array here which will create I mean contain many threads I am creating for now three threads and this is the thread function so we can see that it is taking IDs and this is the scope lock we have two global mutexes just for the demonstration purpose it will lock both and then only it will this I mean it will print this message and here in this critical section you can do access all the critical sections protected by mutex1, mutex2, mutex3 and n number of mutexes critical section can be accessed here. And in the end if you notice we don't have any unlocking and even here we don't have any locking right. So this is implicit lock it will try to lock by itself and as I said if there is any deadlock it will try to resolve using the std lock mechanism because it has some deadlock avoidance algorithms implemented in that. So let me just quickly run this we will compile this first and I'll execute it. See, it is working fine. Now, it is so trivial because we have only three threads. Let me increase this by maybe 25. Can we have 25 running threads in this computer? Yeah, see, there is no deadlock at all. I mean, I have tried creating so many threads. I mean, you just have to experiment, right? So I did that. I don't know, 50 threads. Let's compile this. My system should not, yeah, see, it is working fine. So even if all threads are actually trying to lock it, but there is no deadlock here. Why? It has that functionality inbuilt using std lock. So share it with your friends, man, and hit the like button if you like the video. And if I miss something, let me know in the comment section. I will definitely create another video. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye-bye. Take care.